So if you've been keeping up with the news, you've probably heard of Dragon Man, the 146,000 year old who made news headlines on June the 25th when a paper was published about him saying, we have found a new species, Homo longi, or longi, I'm going to say longi, made news headlines as being our closest found ancestor yet who lived in northeastern China in the middle Pleistocene and has been hailed as the most important archaic human find ever. With the largest cranium ever to have been found, a similar size to ours, which is a fun fact, and several features pointing to the conclusion that he was part of a homo species like us and was in fact our, or one of our sister species in the area. He also gained the nickname Dragon Man because the province that he was found in translates as Black Dragon River in English. So Dragon Man was originally found in 1933 by a bridge construction worker near Harbin City in northeastern China who realised it's the skull's cultural importance when he found it and he decided that he would hide it in his family's well at home and then in 2018, just before he died, he told his grandkids, look, I've got this skull in the well, fetch it and give it to someone. And so they did. They gave it to paleoanthropologists who, as we move on to the dating of the skull, found it to be an extremely important specimen. So looking at the dating of the skull, unfortunately, because we don't know exactly where the man found the skull, we can't have a look at the, the exact sort of soil samples or rock samples around that because we don't know where to look but they did however manage to find out that the skull likely came from the upper Quangshan formation hope I pronounced that right which dates from between 138 to 309 thousand years ago which obviously allowed them to narrow down the age of the skull to some degree. In order to work out the age of the skull, geochemical analysis including rare earth elements, non-destructive x-ray fluorescence and strontium isotopes were used to do this. Now one of the most useful ways that they did this was to take samples from the skull's nasal passages and from mammalian specimens from around the area to do some U-series disequilibrium dating which eventually showed that the skull had to be over 146,000 years old. Now I'm not going to pretend to know what that means exactly but you can look it up if you want. Now, this age overlaps quite a bit with when early Homo sapiens would have been roaming around in Africa and the Middle East and proves that possibly they could have come into contact with our species and interbred, we don't know, and proves that they must have been quite successful in the area of modern day northeastern China and must have been able to live in high altitudes, high latitudes and extreme conditions. Now many paleoanthropologists first believed that this would have been a species of Neanderthal but many now believe that it was actually an offshoot of the Denisovans. So this has in fact pushed back the date that we believe that our species split off from the Neanderthals by over 400,000 years which is quite fun. Now some don't think that he's part of a separate species. A lot of people think that his particular look, his odd combination of archaic and modern features owes to variation, just normal variation. And as paleoanthropologist Bent Viola says, there is a bit of an inflation in the names of species in anthropology, which I have to agree with. Some people think that Dragon Man could be in fact related to a specimen that was found in the Tibetan plateau which is now categorised as its own species called Homo daliensis. However, you know, anthropologists love to name and find new species. It really adds to their list of accolades. However, he has been named as being part of the Harbin group, which is obviously the hypothetical population that he was supposedly part of in the area. And the way that they have decided that he was part of a new species was 
to collect information from 95 specimens across a wide range of hominin species and then characterise over 600 features from those specimens, which was then inputted into a supercomputer to create billions of phylogenetic trees, which altogether created an overall tree which placed the Harbin group on its own little offshoot and therefore is supposedly its own little species fun stuff. And these trees are designed to show the evolutionary relationships between hominins with the fewest evolutionary steps. Now if we have a quick look at Dragon Man's features, as I said, he has a big combination of archaic and modern features which gives him a very unique look and does point to the fact that he was possibly part of a newfound species. Some of his archaic features include so there was only one tooth in his skull, but that tooth had three roots, which is quite an archaic feature. He has a very impressive brow ridge. Quite a squat and wide skull. A very long and low cranium. A lack of ridge along the midline of his skull. Very square, big eye holes and very large teeth in general and quite a wide mouth. But he also has very flat and delicate cheekbones like our species. And obviously a very large cranium comparable to ours. We don't really know about the culture or the lifestyle of Dragoman, obviously, because we don't have any archaeological finds linked to him, and I'm guessing that his population, along with any populations of other species of Homo, would have been quite small, so we'd be very lucky if we were able to find any stone tools or anything that we could definitely link back to his species. But we can only assume that they would have been kind of like the other homo species at the time, living in harsh environments, kind of living lives like the Neanderthals would have, and would have had some sort of technology, stone tool technology, using them as knives, making fur clothes, and hunting, and doing all those basic bitch human activities at the time. Some, in fact, believe that Dragon Man might have been a descendant from the species found in the Levant, the species that was recently found in Israel named the Nesha Ramla homotype, who likely went out and could have possibly, they were kind of like a predecessor of the Neanderthals, so they could have possibly gone out and, you know, Europe, Asia, but who knows really, who knows? In my opinion, to conclude, I think that Dragon Man was just another species of Homo that happened to be in the Homo network because there would have been several species around the world of our genus, I believe, and we just have several other species to find, I think. But it's likely that, as I said, none of their populations would have been particularly big, so we are unlikely to find all of them. But he's another person, another one to add to the human family tree, and that's fun. It's always fun. It's always fun to find a new Denisovan. So yeah, that's pretty much that. Cheers. <laughs> Thanks. Which is now categorised as its own species called Homo dalianensis. No, 